Moin, Hallole, Gritze, Servus, Grüß Gott, Guten Tag. I've just greeted you in the various dialectic forms of German from the Northwest, Southwest, Swiss, Austrian, Bavarian, and Central German, best spoken in Hannover. We, as you might recall, we have characters that are unique to German, the A, the O, and the U with the dots on top called umlauts, respectively A, E, I, and the sharpest S that looks like a beta but was a shorter staff, and that's a sharp S sound, hissing like a snake. You know, Mark Twain said that you can learn English in 30 minutes, French in 30 days, and German in 30 years. And I'd say he's not too far off from the truth. Uh, we'll find that German has a very complex grammar and syntax. And we're going to go through these individually. But uh, the first thing to kind of note is German always capitalizes all nouns. Uh, there's some other peculiarities, such as they keep track of different tenses and plurals, singulars, first, second, third person, you know, me, you, he, it, they, and also for prepositions and something that they call the uh, genitive, which like genitals has to deal with where it comes from. It's really the same thing as of in English. I like to think of German as a plumbing problem where you have to have the right washer and nut attached in the right sequence. And we can see the uh, German grid here that I created, putting everything side by side. Uh, uh, we'll look at these in more detail. Uh, we have what's called accusative direct object. I'll explain it. Then you have indirect object called dative and then you have the genitive which is possessive direct object indirect object uh, I give him the book I give the book to him you got to figure out which one of those is the direct or indirect object uh, we'll figure that out let's start with the accusative direct object I love you I take the train and uh, we have first, second, third person, and uh, I, you, he, she, it, ich, du, der, die, das. Plurals are always D. Contrary to popular belief and Mark Twain, the genders, he, she, it, are not associated with the meaning, but are associated with the sound of the word. ER and IG words tend to be masculine. Words ending in T, T I O N, tend to be feminine. Words ending in kin or nis, foreign words, tend to be neuter. Hence, Dash Mädchen is neuter. She's not yet a woman. The word order is similar to uh, English. The adjectives precede the noun, although noting that the secondary verb, dependent clause, the verb will often go at the end. The uh, verbs, E ending for I, ST for you, singular, T for the verbs for third person, and E in for plurals. Ich habe, du hast, er hat, wir haben. These are often correct. Most sentences then would have a preposition upon, for, behind, next to, uh, below, above, and you'll see them here auf, für, hinter, neben, über, unter. By the way, notice for auf and für, I have a little dot there, meaning they can be contracted with the stuff we're going to do later. So if we had, say, I uh, take the book behind the table, uh, well, let's see. Behind, oh yeah, that's hinter. So now I have to know that the der becomes den, a d becomes d, that's fine, das becomes das. 
So the dare and den are the ones we got to worry about. And then we can sometimes contract those as appropriate. And uh, notice now the adjectives start to change with the dare having E in adjectives, D having E adjectives, and the DOS, sometimes E or ES adjective endings. But watch it for the D version for the plural. The ending for the adjectives is uh, E in. But it's kind of simple because for the plural, you always have E in across the board for both the verb and the adjectives. Uh, the uh, direct pronouns, we would then have a me, you, him, her, it, them. And, uh, of course, they always have a formal case, as they do in uh, German. Uh, so it's mich, dich, in, sie, es, uns, us, euch, or sie, for them. Z being the formal. All right, let's try another one. Ich liebe, du liebst, er liebt, die lieben. We all love something, huh? And the ending, E, S, T, T, E, N. Then you might love something that's masculine. Then it would be den instead of dare. Notice everything else is the same except for the plural. Then becomes den. Here's a trick is uh, when you do have to do these variations and you have multiple stuff like adjectives and articles, uh, one only needs to make the change. Now notice, let's go to uh, uh or some, ein, eine, ein, einige. And uh, if it's in the accusative for it's einen, eine, ein, einigen, some or a. Uh. Let's look at the uh, possessive genitive. Think of the word genealogy. It actually becomes a little simpler and you only have two choices, which is des or dare. Uh, the dare occurs with the D second person feminine and the plural, and the des occurs with the das and the dare, the masculine and the neuter singular. The adjectives which precede the uh, noun as in English, the change will occur one place or the other. And so you would have uh, der rote or ein roter, uh, or the red something. But you have die rote or eine rote. Notice the E ending is carried just as the R was carried through. And same thing with the das. Das rote or ein rotes, the S carried through. And we have the uh, plural, die roten, or einige rote. But now notice that the adjectives after the genitive uh, always comes e in. And now notice that the objective pronouns become meine, deine, seine, ihre, seine, unser, euer, if you want to be formal. Here's the dative, the indirect object. That's the secondary thing, so to speak. And it's marked by the words aus, bei, mit, nach, von, zu. And notice there's a couple of them that can be abbreviated, contracted. So bei can become beim if you have an M ending. Uh, zu can become zum or zur if you have a contraction that has a R. Or an M. And let's see, we have the uh, endings always again. That's nice for the adjectives being EN. The pronouns in the uh, dative become mir, dir, im, ihr, im. Notice the repetition. Uns, euch, ihnen, us, them, or you formal. And notice again, the U formal is the same both in singular and plural. I put the accusative direct, dative indirect, and genitive possessive side by side again. But this time I've color coded the thematic patterns, various colors. 
red, yellow, green, blue. Uh, blue is the R endings. Carries across, disappears in the accusative. That kind of makes sense. Uh, pops up in the indirect dative, but as now a feminine. And then takes over in the feminine as well as the pronouns. The S ending, red, carries across in the third person uh, neuter and pops up again, though, also for the masculine in the genitive. The yellow denotes the E in the ending, which is across the board for the most part for the plural, and pops up in the direct object accusative for the masculine. And green represents the e -m endings, which uniquely appear in the indirect dative for the masculine and the neuter, but not the feminine, which takes the R. Ich hoffe, dass dieses war gut bei dir oder Ihnen. I hope this was good for you or you formal. Thank <laughs> you.